Your body is art. I have always loved drawing and painting, ever since I was a young boy. My family was pretty well off, so they could afford to send me to the best schools, etc. But as I grew older, my father wanted to see me fake a different approach, such as focusing getting into business school. That was far from what I wanted to do with my life, so we clashed. I ended up moving out of the house when I was 18. I was still in okay terms with my parents, but I'd been cut off. The only person who was always supportive of my dream was my older sister, Erica. She was always protective of me and trying to make sure that everything went well for me. Due to me moving out, I did not see myself furthering my education. I just painted by night and did odd jobs by day. I was also very antisocial. I did not enjoy people's company. I preferred my brushes. Because of that, I had no friends or lovers. I found it all too exhausting and I just focused on my art and actually making something of myself. I applied to many galleries in and out of town, but I never got any promising response. So I was the definition of the starving artist. Everything I made, I invested back into my art because I was so passionate. I rented a two room apartment with no roommate. My sister helped me pay the bulk of the rent, no matter how much I had refused in the beginning. She was simply too kind for her own good. One day, while she was visiting me, I got some mail. I saw that it had the logo of an art gallery that I had applied to. I skimmed through the letter expecting to see that I had not been offered a place to showcase my art again. It was always the same thing. My art was beautiful, but it lacked something. I had to put something of myself in it. That was what I'd gotten the last time. I kind of got what they meant. Maybe I was too rigid and lacked personality. Being around people drained me. At school, I'd been called arrogant more times than I could count, but I had no patience for this word. I preferred to read and draw, to get lost in the worlds that did not exist, and to create my own world. But Erica insisted that I had to learn to live and experience the world, different people. But I preferred to draw fantasies, Worlds and people I would only meet in my dreams. I skimmed through the letter, but this time it was different. They said that they had shortlisted me for an exhibition, but that I had to submit two pieces for them, one of my own choice, and another that was a prompt for them. I was happy to do so until I saw what the prompt was. A nude portrait? What the hell? I exclaimed. Of course, it had to be a nude portrait. When was anything so easy for me? Trust me, I had no aversion to the human body, nor was I scared. I just did not feel as if I was that interesting to paint, especially naked. And on top of that, I had to find a model for it, be it male or female. I cannot do this. I folded the letter and put it away. You cannot draw the human body? She asked. Of course I can draw basic anatomy, but I don't want to. Why should I paint a naked human though? I sighed. I would have no trouble coming up with a concept for the first painting, but the second would be troublesome. You are unbelievable, she suddenly exclaimed. Why? I asked. You're very good at your art, and you love it with a passion, but you refuse to put yourself out there. Where will you get in life if you refuse to live? She asked me. I don't have to, I can just... Too many excuses, she cut me off. But, I tried to explain. You will do this exhibition, you will paint a nude portrait, even if I have to drag you to the easel myself, she said. She was very gentle and a small person, but when she put her mind to something, she did not take no for an answer. I knew better than to go against her. She was a dangerous woman, believe it or not. Yes, sister, I will do so, I gulped. Good. Now who should you use as a muse? She said as she started thinking. After a while, she snapped her fingers as if she had a brilliant idea. Maria would love to, I'm sure of it, she smiled. Maria was a girl that we went to school with, who was always trying to get my attention. I had somehow managed to see as little of her as I could for the past two years. The only times she was in town were for the holidays. Hell no, not Maria, I protested. She started to list the names of more girls, but I denied every one of them. Are you being so difficult, she asked. I would just not feel comfortable, I responded. Oh yes, you're shy. I guess you would be more comfortable with a guy? Maybe one of your friends? Oh no, bad idea. They're all off at college, she sighed. Then suddenly her phone buzzed. Yes, he's perfect, she suddenly exclaimed. Who now? I asked. Brad, she smiled, eyes sparkling. It seemed that my sister was just coming up with ways to embarrass me. How could I paint Brad of all people? When I see him, I tend to get out of his way. He made me feel uncomfortable with his piercing eyes. Brad was her best friend since childhood, and he was gay. Brad was the confident, loud, and proud. When he entered a room, everyone looked at him. Even the way he spoke, everyone paid attention. Brad was everything that I was not, 
so he made me very uncomfortable. I did not get along with very social and loud people. I couldn't imagine being in a room for hours with him. I would not know how to even act around him. He would never agree, I rolled my eyes. He just did, she said. How? I asked. My powers of persuasion, of course, she smirked. Sometimes she scared me with the way that she was able to easily convince people to do things for her. Now that was a girl who had the whole world wrapped around her finger. Thank you, Erica, I smiled as I leaned over to hug her. I did not deserve her kindness, and how she went about her way to help me. It had been like that since we were kids. She had spoken up for me when I was too shy to do so in social situations. Anything for you, and I want the first ticket to your exhibition when you get accepted, okay? She grinned. Of course, I grinned. I would give her a ticket to see Willy Wonka's factory if I had one. I had no idea how I got lucky enough to have a sister like her. I got Brad's number and started texting him to arrange the days and nights when we would meet for me to paint him. He was very friendly and not as intimidating as I had thought of him. Erica left to go to her place, and I was left alone in my apartment with my thoughts. I was scared. I had drawn the human body before, but I had never done the nude body. It would be a challenge for me, and I hoped that it would not mess up. There were times when people admired my art, and all I could feel was imposter syndrome. My self-esteem was not the highest by any means, and I was content with being in the background. In the past, I didn't really date. There were girls who seemed interested, but I was always shy. It did not help that I had no patience for people. I had tried out relationships after being urged to by my two close friends, but I never saw the appeal in love. So it was safe to say that I had never loved. My sister preferred to say that I had never lived, and maybe she was right. I had never thought of it in that way, but I had never truly ventured into the world and experienced it. I never saw a need to. People made me nervous. I paged through a book and tried to make sense of the words, but I failed that night. All that was running through my head about my painting ruined my concentration. I ended up going to bed early. The next day, I had work early in the morning, then I would meet with Brad later in the evening. I tried hard not to worry too much about the pieces that I had two months to prepare. Soon, I was done with work and I was off to my place. He was late, about half an hour late. I valued punctuality more than anything, but I reminded myself that he was doing me a favor and that I was not entitled to his time. He arrived soon enough. Cheeks flushed red and eyes sparkling. Are you okay? I asked him. He grinned and nodded. Of course I am. I was just horse racing, he said. Oh, you race? I asked. Hardly. It was just a friendly match with my brother, he smiled. Oh, that sounds fun, I smiled. Can you ride a horse? He asked me. My parents got me lessons once. It didn't go well, I said. He laughed as if I had just said something funny, but I didn't get it. Anyways, have you had someone paint you before or done any modeling? I asked. I've done some modeling for fun, but I've never been amused before, he winked. I smiled tightly. He was a ball of energy, almost giving me sensory overload. I wondered how I was going to be able to paint him when he could not seem to be able to stand still. Are you always this quiet? I find it hard to believe that you're related to Erica sometimes, he chuckled. I'm not quiet, I just express myself differently, I said. And you speak so naturally too, he mused. I felt my temper flare, which was very rare. I try not to lose my temper too much, and when I did, I had my art to release it. I calmed it and reminded myself that he was not trying to be mean, he was just brutally honest, it seemed. It's my personality, I guess, I said shortly. Okay, can we get started then? He asked as he started to take off his shirt. No, no, not here, in my room, I said. Oh, I like the sound of that, he smirked. I cannot help blushing. Brad made me uneasy, which is why I avoided him when I was around him, but now there was no way that I could. I needed him, for a month or so. Not every day, of course, but when we were both free. I wanted my painting to be perfection, so I was going to take as long as I could get it to be perfect. I tried not to judge my model from first glance. From what I had seen in the living room, he had a pleasant enough body, not too muscular, more lean. I was sure that I could come up with something decent. We entered my studio. Feel free to put your clothes on the rack over there, and if you need anything, let me know, I said. Awesome. When can I take off my clothes? He asked. He seemed almost too eager, but I brushed it off. No need to take off everything. You can keep your undergarments on. I just need to do a few rough sketches while you pose for me today, I explained. Undergarments? Who uses that word nowadays? He snickered. I glared at him and he quickly hid it. I was trying to keep this as professional as possible, and he was finding stuff to laugh about. He stripped down to his undergarments and I started sketching. He had a good posture and was surprisingly easy to work with. 
He could easily do most of the poses that I asked him to, and he did not complain about being tired, but he did talk a lot. He was always blabbering about what he had been up to for the last few months and whatever adventurous things he had been up to lately. I did not mind the rambling, and I replied with acknowledgement which seemed to be enough for him. I thought of a pose that would look good on him and I quickly sketched it, but I did not look nearly as natural as I wanted it to be. I got up and went to adjust him. I was very much aware of his breathing and his scent when I was adjusting him. I tried to keep my hands from shaking as I touched him to adjust him. I was sure that I was just shaking because he was not used to working with a model before. I usually got my references from the internet or magazines when I was doing concept art. I adjusted him and stepped back, but I noticed that his arm was not quite right. I also noticed that he had stopped talking a while ago and was watching me. You're quite the perfectionist, Richard, he whispered. Why are you whispering? I asked him. I don't want you to break your concentration, he said. Jay stepped back to make sure that the light was hitting him in the right way. It was still early evening and the light was fading quickly. This is why I preferred night shifts. But I didn't get them often so I had to rely on artificial light most of the time I was painting. Not bad, I smiled. He raised an eyebrow. You can smile? he asked. Yes, I'm a human, not an object, I rolled my eyes. I quickly sketched the pose. You can go now. I will arrange with you so that we can meet a bit earlier when you're free, I said. It was no use sketching anyone with this light. The rough sketches I had done were enough for me to get an idea of his body and the kind of painting I wanted. Can I see? he asked me. These are just stick figures for now, but you're free to, I shrugged as I handed my sketchbook to him. He paged through and I started to pack my pencils. The struggle of losing stuff and only finding it in a stray sketchbook weeks later was one I knew too well. Your work is perfect, but I wanted to ask, he said. Sure, I replied. Your work is beautiful. Most of your stuff is fantasy and creatures. But I do not see anything from when you go out alone, he said. What do you mean, I asked him. It's just that your work is beautiful, but it's too perfect. It's not wild. But what do I know? I'm not an art critic, he shrugged. He started to put on his clothes. I don't go out much. I don't know how to be wild, I confessed. I had no idea why I was telling this to a mere acquaintance. I felt as if I had misjudged him in the beginning. I thought of him as an overconfident person who was out of my reach. You should be more social. You're young. Maybe you should start living, he shrugged. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm living, am I not? I'm painting. I'm independent, I said. I had no idea who he thought he was to come tell me what I should and should not do. If I did not want to hang out with other people and preferred books to parties, then he could not change me. Don't get me wrong, I barely know you. What I'm saying is that it would be nice to hang out with you. Your sister always complains about how you don't have a social life, he said. Gee, thanks, Erica. I love my sister, but she meddled in my life too much sometimes. Do not worry too much about me. Thank you for coming, though, and helping me today. You should tell me how much I owe you, I said. Oh no, you don't have to give me money, but if you would like to... Would you come to this event with me? He asked as he handed me what seemed to be a ticket. A party? I asked. Not quite, more like a night to let loose. There will be many activities, he said. I'm not good around people, I protested. I get it, but if you change your mind, it's on Saturday. You don't have to be there for long, he said. I found it very weird that he was asking me to go. We were not even friends, and he knew that I was terrible at social situations. I needed to get to the bottom of why he wanted to hang out with me in the first place. I'll let you know, I said as I looked at the invitation ticket. He grinned and made his way out. Why was this guy who had everything trying to hang out with me? To be continued. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our rainbow force and stay wholesome.